Hi, my name is Zach, and in this bite-sized build video, I'm going to show you how I built what I'm calling the Pixel Pressure Pad. If you're watching this video, chances are you have a lot of creative ideas and you like making things. My goal with Bite Size is to take you along a journey as I build my projects and show you how to break complex ideas into more manageable pieces. I want to give you the knowledge, the inspiration, and the confidence to make your ideas a reality. Let me give you a quick rundown of the plan of how I'm going to complete this project. I like looking for interesting and unique electronic components and occasionally I find something like this. This is a 7 inch resistive touch sensor. I bought a couple of these several years ago in hopes that it would inspire me to come up with some creative project to use them in. Using this as the base of this project, I'm going to challenge myself to build a project using only components that I already have on hand. I was looking through the LEDs that I have and I found this strip of individually addressable RGB LEDs. What I'm thinking about now is cutting several strips of these and creating a grid that sits just behind this touch sensor. I'll be using an Arduino microcontroller to take the information from this touch sensor as well as write out the information needed to control the RGB LEDs. What I envision is having a handheld tablet where I press and the lights will react to the position and pressure of my finger. So I'll need to design and 3D print an enclosure for all of the electronics. It's time to talk about the sponsor of today's video. Altium Designer is a professional PCB design environment that I've been using for several years. One of the things that I like about Altium Designer is the floating license. So I have a desktop here that I do most of my work on, but I also have a laptop that I'll bring with me and sometimes I need to do projects on the go. Altium Designer makes it super easy to open up the license manager and release the license on my desktop so that I can use it for my laptop. They've been working on improving Altium Designer for over 35 years. Another cool feature is that you can set up a cloud workspace, so your projects are saved in the cloud and you can take them wherever you go. I was recently working on a project that started on my laptop but I needed to finish up here on my desktop and that was super easy to do using this feature. If you're ready to take your PCB design to the next level, I would highly recommend checking out Altium Designer. I'll put a link in the description where you can try out a free trial of Altium Designer. Supporting sponsors like Altium is a really wonderful way to support this channel. If you use that custom link, that lets Altium know that you came from Bite Size, and that's a great way to support this channel.
So you might notice that these are actually different LEDs than I showed at the beginning. The reason for that is I wanted to make sure that the LEDs had the same uh, distribution, the same density, both vertically and horizontally. And the ones I was using before were a lot more dense uh, horizontally than they would have been vertically, which would have looked weird. And these are specifically spaced out so that you can lay them out in a grid like this and the spacing vertically and horizontally is equal. So it'll look a lot nicer. One of the cool things about this device is that it doesn't have to be any certain thing. It's versatile enough that you could use it as a platform to kind of program different games or different uses or applications for this. Like I said in the beginning, I think I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to program the lights to follow my finger as I move it around and use the pressure of my finger to change the color of the lights. But if you were to do this project, you could use it for like a MIDI controller to control musical instruments or use it as a game pad and program some sort of game in there. The possibilities are endless. So I'm going to jump on the computer and go ahead and start programming this. The first thing I'm going to do is get the inputs for the touch sensor. So when I press my finger in a certain location, I want to know where that location is. The second thing I need to do is to map the LED matrix to the locations from the touch sensor. And finally, I will take the pressure sensor readings and map those to specific colors in a spectrum.
I sure hope that this project inspired you to make something that you're excited about. If you like project videos like this, I'll post a couple more at the end that I'd recommend for you to watch. You should also subscribe to Bite Size and consider becoming a supporting member through Patreon or through YouTube memberships. Bite Size supporting members get access to cool things like behind the scenes content, early video releases, and monthly hangouts. When you become a Bite Size supporting member, not only is that a great way to support the channel and the projects that I do, it's also a great way for me to connect with you on a more personal level. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video and I look forward to seeing you next time. You can even get a trial for a free link. A trial for a free link?